Welcome to Keys to Success, which is live on the ThinkTech live streaming network series weekly on Thursdays at 11 a.m. We are your hosts. My name is Danelia, D-A-N-E-L-I-A. And I'm the other half of the duo, John Newman. Welcome to the show. The goal of this show is to provide professional and personal development tools and profound insights on how to achieve success in life, career and or business. We are very grateful for all the positive feedback we have received from viewers. Comments like every time I watch the show I either learn something new or am reminded of what I need to refocus on in my life and business. You, our viewers, are our motivation. Dr. Tony O'Bagby, Acting Director of the Veteran Affairs Pacific Islands Healthcare System, was our guest on our last show, and her words of wisdom can be accessed on Newman Consulting Services' website, which is newmanconsultingservices.com, or our landing page, denelia.org. Our theme for today is Embracing Change and Overcoming Fear. Joining us in the studio today as our honor guest is Adrian Alfonso, the owner of Aesthetic Dental Designs. Mahalo for joining us today, Adrian. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, it's a pleasure right. to have you here. Thanks. Okay, we're going to jump right in on this and ask you some wicked questions, okay? <laughs> Bring it on. <laughs> All right. Share with, I guess, uh, what made you decide to create aesthetic designs? Um, I was introduced into the industry at, a, at an early age of, of 15. I, I grew up with my aunt and uncle here in Hawaii, mm, and okay. my, my uncle in the laboratory. Oh. So as soon as I was old enough to work, uh, yeah. back then I think it was 16, you got your worker's permit. Yeah. He, that's where he put me. Put you to work. Put me to work. <laughs> family, family business, huh? Yeah, Keep me out right. of trouble. Yeah, um, that's right. right. Okay. Yeah, and um, after high school, I, I, I moved to the mainland in Nevada and, and uh, Los Angeles, and I, I found jobs doing the same thing. Mm. Um, kind of advanced my skills there, and eventually I, I moved back home to run my uncle's business because mm -hmm. uh, he was in Air Force Reserves. Mm -hmm. um, he, he took a position as a active reserve, I think it's called, mm -hmm. that made him full-time there for, for a few years and mm -hmm. he needed someone to run his laboratory. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's when I was here running it for him for a few years and um, <clears throat> his position became a civilian job. He's, oh. a, he's a program analyst for, for the Pacific Air Force. Mm -hmm. And um, at the time, he, he didn't want the lab anymore. So mm -hmm. he, was, he was Adrian, you know, I, I'm gonna close the lab. You mm -hmm. can either find another lab to work at or you can buy my assets or you can start your own laboratory and, mm. and I op opted for for my own adventure. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. opportunity, huh? Opportunity. Yeah, that's definitely. great. And you took advantage of it. Try to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, when did you take over to uh, with your own business with with that? 2009. 2009. May, 2009. May of 2009 is when okay. we officially officially started okay. on our own. So, was there any um, other considerations in your <clears> mind? <throat> at that point? Did you experience any fear taking over the business or were you just really comfortable and just knew that was the right thing to do? It was the only thing I knew how to do, to um, be honest. Um, um, when, when it was presented to me, there was, I think I went through every single emotion there was, yeah. um, right, from, from going to, for working for people to, to becoming your own boss. It, it sounds great, but there's, yeah. there's so much, um, <laughs> responsibility uh, that comes with that. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. We yeah. understand that. Uh, there, there was a lot of fear, of course. Yes. Um, it was, fear is not really the right, right word. I think it's more concern uh -huh. mm -hmm. because now I'm in charge of my own, my own success. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, you start to doubt yourself a little bit. Right? Yeah, in, in yes. so true. It's, it's hard in the beginning, but yeah. um, uh, to overcome that, I, I surrounded myself with, with good people. I joined a, there's, an, a, there's a local association mm -hmm. um, of uh, mostly dental laboratory owners mm -hmm. okay. and, and I, I connected with them and, and they were reassuring that everything everything's hard in the beginning mm -hmm. um, they, they've all been there mm -hmm. uh, and just just like I, I was fortunate to to be your neighbors mm -hmm. right <laughs> my, my first our original office was yes. right next door to you and yeah. mm -hmm. and those Sundays that you know John you would see me in there mm -hmm. and I'd tell you oh it's just busy you would always just tell me that's how it is, young man. <laughs> 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 so things like that really helped. Yeah, <laughs> and, um, yeah it was. Okay. It was fine. What do you What do you uh, want? What do you want to accomplish? What, what What is it that you want to accomplish in your business? You know, what are your goals? Uh, for me, there's business goals and there's personal goals. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, business goals. I you know we we fabricate. Uh, dental prosthetics, uh, mm -hmm. fixed prosthetics, uh, implants, bridges, 
um, you know, anything restorative for, right. for a patient. Um, that's the ultimate goal, right, is, is treating these patients. And, um, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, for, for a patient that, that has no teeth or, or they want cosmetic work done, you know, mm -hmm. um, we partner with dentists. We don't work directly with patients. We work through the dentist. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, creating that team to really help the patient mm -hmm. and the best possible outcome is for them to love what they have mm -hmm. in aesthetics and in function. Um, my own personal goals is, of course, uh, stability for my family, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right, and, and preparing for the future, mm -hmm. right? Isn't that always the driving force? I think for, for a lot, I, you know, it's interesting to see how the, we go through different <clears throat> phases of our life. You know, mm -hmm. when you first bought your, you know, when you first took over the business, um, you were in a different situation. I mean, we saw you, uh, we saw you in the beginning, actually, and then, you know, you got married and now you have a child and it's mm -hmm. just, it's been wonderful for us. A blessing for us to to watch you grow that way, you know. Thank you. Yeah. Well, we, al we also it. saw the, the the love and affection that you you put into your work. Yeah. You know, you you really, as you stated, you want to help people. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to make sure that people, when they when they have your product, you know, it makes them feel better. Mm -hmm. You know, about themselves mm -hmm. and enjoy. Absolutely. Well, having no teeth is just like, I mean, that's a big <laughs> thing, you know. And so, you know, whoever's doing the work, I mean, you, you're totally trusting that person to yeah. produce the, the best product you can possibly have. Yes. You know, so, Absolutely. yeah, that's yeah. great. Okay. Well, you recently moved into a bigger <clears throat> space. Yes. And so, um, why did you move into a bigger space? What was your purpose for doing that? And also... How did you know that was the right move? Uh, yeah, we moved into a larger office mm. in April of this year. Mm -hmm. um, it's something we've been talking about for a few years. Uh, we we loved our location. We mm -hmm. we never wanted to leave our location, mm -hmm. um, the building that we're in. And um, we've actually been looking for a few years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the opportunity came up where the space opened up and. Just one day, I was like, hey, Lisa, my, my wife, I was like, do you, do you want to look at the space just, mm -hmm. just for fun? Let's mm -hmm. look at it. And as soon as we saw it, we fell in love with it. Uh. Um, one, of, one of the main reasons for me was to open up, have a space that we could dedicate for education. Uh -huh. um, I've done educational events at my old lab, but those are just chairs set mm -hmm. up mm -hmm. in the midst of the rest of the laboratory. Right. Um, this one, I wanted a proper place. Because uh, I'm, I'm inviting Dennis there. Right, and it needs to look professional. Um, they need to know that I'm serious. Right. Uh, our our model that we we we've kind of been going by was encourage communication through education. Mm. There, there's 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 a big disconnect. I've experienced mm. it between laboratories and technicians. Sometimes. That's a tweetable quote. Say, yes, that, say that again. <laughs> encourage communication through education. Yeah, That's I cool. <laughs> yeah. You better watch out. She's taking. <laughs> Uh, okay. So you wanted to have more communication going on in that area? More communication. Uh -huh. um, there's, you know, a, a doctor fills out a prescription and sends it to us. Um, we're, we're creating a, a restoration for a patient, but not everyone is the same. Mm. Um, there, there's a lot of communication that, that needs to, to, to be had, mm -hmm. especially with implants and, um, mm -hmm. you know, fully indentulous, meaning like a patient with no teeth. Mm -hmm. or if we're restoring a full arch. Mm -hmm. Right now, now we need to be on the same page as far as function, mm -hmm. um, patient expectations, things like that. Um, the education more is to to educate, but more to share stories. Mm -hmm. Right? If 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 I if I'm working with a dentist and we go through these troubles, and it took us ten steps to get there, mm -hmm. well, the next dentist I work with, I want to be able to share that experience and get us there in five steps. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that that's that's really the main focus of it. But you know, when you when you go, I mean, we were in the same situation when we when we um, first came here to Hawaii years ago, twenty five years ago, uh, and we started with a little little room, you know, mm -hmm. and then uh, within six months we expanded into the space that mm -hmm. that you see now, which is much larger. And about two years ago, we we expanded that as well. <clears throat> um, but uh, I guess you know one of the questions I wanted to ask you is, you know, what comes with bigger space is extra overhead, extra expenses. <laughs> And how so do you deal with how that? do you how how did you mentally deal with that? Was there no question about it? You didn't even think about it, or was that a factor? Of course, it was a factor. <laughs> um, we nearly tripled our space. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Which mean our rent. Yeah. Just about tripled. Yeah. Um, it was a big concern. Yeah. Um, we, Lisa and I, we we do we do make it a point to have 
monthly meeting. It's just my wife and I, mm -hmm. Lisa and I running there. Mm -hmm. But she handles the finances. But it's so important for us to be on the same page. Mm -hmm. And, and, and we, we talked about it. And we knew that if we wanted to grow our business, this was a move that we needed to take. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's part of it was having faith mm -hmm. that, that the opportunities were going to come. Mm -hmm. um, another part of it was believing in, in our business plan. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So did, yeah. did we know, we, we have a number that we have done that we have to hit yeah. every month. And, right. and of course that number grew. Right. And really just, just mainly believing, believing in, in, in our business that, that yes. we can do it was, okay. that's, that's how we've, we've tackled everything. And believing in yourself. You know, it's interesting because when, when we first in, moved into our office space, uh, we didn't really need to have a training room, mm -hmm. uh, but they offered a, this training room was in a unique situation, location, so they offered to give us the training room for a, for a very reasonable price. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I don't know, John, you know, it's a 600 square foot training room, that's a lot of expense. And John's like, baby, we need to do it. We need yeah. to do this because, you know, there, there'll be a re we will utilize it, there'll be a reason for it. And here now, you know, we can sit 20 people in it, we have laptops, we have tables, and we're doing trainings. And it's just fantastic, you know, all from believing in it. And a little bit before I moved, you guys even expanded more. Yes, oh, yeah. that's true. Yeah, and the thing <laughs> that's is, true. you have a goal. Yeah. And as you said, you, you, you work to achieve your goal. Yes. And if you uh, just take one step at a time, mm -hmm. you know, you're always going to be catching up. So if you know where you want to be, Mm -hmm. Then put yourself there, and put yourself there, and mm -hmm. also also understand that you will you will hit obstacles. There you go, and mm -hmm. you know don't don't be turned away by them. Mm -hmm. Kind of face them and, and get through it, and believe in yourself, and mm -hmm. and you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because because having a business is uh, a challenging but actually fantastic experience. Because while you're going through all the obstacles, it's very difficult. Mm -hmm. But like you said, having you know, that communication going is very important. Mm -hmm. Knowing where you are in your business, having belief that it's all going to be okay is, mm -hmm. is like one of the top priorities is mm -hmm. believing, 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 believing. Never, ever, ever give up on yourself. Yeah. Ever. That's great. Adrian, statistics show that out of 100 new businesses, 70 actually fade away in the first two years and 25% survive for 15. Now, you've been in business since 2009, so you're in the top 50% of success rate. Mm -hmm. So what do you attribute your success to? For one, I think it's the trade I'm in. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'll have to be honest about that, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's, it's a business that should be around. Uh, mm -hmm. Statistically, they are around for a very long time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it's a specialty. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Right? right? Um, uh, I, I think one of the, one of our big success, uh, one of the reasons for success now is, is how we've adapted digital technology. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Digital digital is kind of, it's a, it has a huge influence in demo right now, mm -hmm. um, and that that goes back to the start of digital X-ray, mm -hmm. digital charts. Um, mm -hmm. You guys are familiar with yes with that, yes. right? <laughs> but um. Uh, now there's digital impressioning, where instead of taking a traditional polyvinyl impression, where you know dentist sticks his gooey stuff in your mouth, has you bite down. Mm. Now they're taking a camera, camera tip, and it's going into your mouth, and they're taking a 3D image. Mm. Mm. And um, there's such a uh, sorry, there's there's a huge learning curve yes. for that um, yes. for dentists and for laboratories. Right. Um, for me, na I naturally caught on. Mm -hmm. um, it, it came easy to me, mm. and. I've, I've become I become a resource for for local supply companies. Like oh, they, they wow. ask me they ask me to speak. They ask me to train. That's great. Um, Congratulations. Thank you. That's yeah. great. And uh, yeah, I mean that 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 opens up a lot of opportunities there because now these companies are saying, hey, there's this guy Adrian studying right. nanodesigns. Call him for help. 
That's great. Yeah. Let's come back to that in okay. just a moment because that's a really, really good thing that you're saying. We're going to take a short break. This is Keys to Success on the Think Tech Live Streaming Network series. We're talking with Adrian Alfonso, owner of Aesthetic Dental Designs, regarding our theme today, Embracing Change and Overcoming Fear. My name is Danelia, D-A-N-E-L-I-A. And I'm another half of the duo, John Newman. We'll be back in a minute, so please stay tuned for more Keys to Success. Hey everybody, my name is David Chang and I am a new host for the show, The Art of Thinking Smart. I'm really excited to be able to share with you how to get the smart edge in life. We're going to have awesome guests in the military, business, political, nonprofit world. So no matter what background you're from, we have something for you. Please join us every other Thursday at 10 a.m. at thinktechhawaii.com or on theartofthinkingsmart.com. I look forward to seeing you. For a very healthy summer, watch Viva Hawaii. We're giving you the best tips and with our best health coach here. So, Viva Health Coach. Viva la comida saludable. Aloha. It's summertime in Honolulu, Hawaii. My name is Stephen Philip Katz. I'm your host for Shrink Wrap Hawaii. We're on every Tuesday at 3 o'clock, and we talk about mental health and general health. Join us. Thank you. Welcome back. This is Keys to Success on the Think Tech Live Streaming Network series. We encourage you to call our hotline at 415-871-2474 to join our conversation or tweet us at thinktechhi if you have any questions or comments. We've been talking with Adrian Alfonso, owner of Aesthetic Dental Designs, regarding our theme today, embracing change and overcoming fear. My name is Danelia, D-A-N-E-L-I-A. -E and I'm the other half of the duo, John Newman. Welcome back. So Adrian, you were before the break you were talking about the fact that now you're teaching and you're you're you've been off, um, asked to give presentations and so forth. Yes. Great. Yeah. So follow up on that if you will. Uh, so the the main company that I that I am an advocate for is Dentsply Serona. Mm -hmm. um, they for the uh, clinician side, which is the dentist side, they 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 have CEREC. Mm -hmm. Um, CEREC is just the dentist's ability to do a chair side, chair side restoration. Um, I don't know if you've heard a lot of same day restorations. Oh, right. I'm glad you explained that because we have no <laughs> idea what you're talking about. <laughs> that, that, that's kind of that's kind of what they push. Okay, okay. great. Yeah. Um, I also so I be, I become a resource for them. Oh, great. Um, okay. uh, supporting them in in, in digital whether mm -hmm. it's designing or just just figuring out the, the program mm -hmm. itself. It, it's software. There, mm -hmm. There's a huge learning curve with software. Okay. Yeah. So what's right. interesting through this conversation is that it's very clear that in your heart you're doing the work that you're supposed to be doing. Yes. Right? I mean, very. that's obvious. That's, that's really come out and I think that's mm -hmm. really important for people to understand um, mm -hmm. that in your business, whatever or whatever you do in life as far as work or, um, you know, donating time or whatever it is, that you do what you love to do because, and that you know in your heart you're meant to do that. That's really critical. Yeah, and it that wasn't always clear to me. Mm -hmm. I, um, in, in fact, our first year in business, I probably spent a year looking for a second job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no joke. Yeah. yeah. But you said from the beginning, you said, you know, this is the only thing that I that I know. You know, yeah. uh, I was I was born into it. I, I that was everything, and mm -hmm. you became passionate about it. Yes. And we can see it in the way you. Uh, are answering these questions and sharing with us mm -hmm. and that's a wonderful thing that's a blessing well you know it's interesting because I think we all go through that in business I mean I know other business people same thing you know they come and they they talk to us and we're like look just don't give up because we t I did the same thing okay we had our business for a while and it was just so it, it's just seven seven days a week you know 24 yeah. hours a day virtually and it was just so exhausting and you're going through all these challenges and I said you know I said to John I said I think I'm just gonna get it job and I, I got a job for like three months and I was miserable and I was crying every day he's like what's going on you know I said you know I realize now that I'm meant to we, we are meant to have a business that we're meant yeah. to do this and I've never looked back we've never looked back since mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> okay all right I love thank you, my yeah. <laughs> thank you okay Adrian change is a main constant in life we know that 
Uh, embracing change is a key element in growing and improving. So, share with us, how have you learned to embrace change? To embrace change? Mm -hmm. How I've learned to embrace change? Mm -hmm. It was uh, going back to, to the change in our industry, mm -hmm. right? It was, yeah. mm -hmm. if, if, if digital technology and dentistry were, were gone today, I would be fine. Mm -hmm. I was raised in a traditional laboratory. Mm -hmm. I can make things by hand right. from start to finish. Uh. Um, that's not the direction the industry was heading. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so so I, I embraced it by first investing in it, mm -hmm. right? That, that, was, that was the single most difficult decision we had to make because for us there was an uh, initial investment into it. But um, then it was just getting yourself out there. Mm -hmm. There's people that want to teach you how to do things correctly, mm -hmm. how to do things easier, right? It's just, it's connecting with the right people and networking with mm -hmm. the right people, finding people that inspire mm -hmm. what was a big part of it, yes. mm -hmm. right? Because there, there's a lot of naysayers. Yes. Um, not, not to ignore them. They, right. they, they have something, you know, that, that can help you still, but finding people that would motivate you mm -hmm. to be successful. You know, that's interesting because that's one of the subjects that people keep bringing up on the show is that you've got to <coughs> surround yourself with people who support you and are positive influences mm -hmm. in your life and have mentors. You know, that's yes. extremely important. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Good. Wonderful. So what do, you, uh, what do you feel are your top three success habits? Top three success, uh, success habits? I, I've been thinking about this all night, <laughs> right? Um, the first one... See, now I got to think about this. <laughs> yeah, that's it down. exactly what we want you to do. <laughs> I take was surprised your time. you didn't have any paper hey, with you. Take, you like us. It, <laughs> take your time and think about it. Because okay. you're, you're speaking from the heart yeah. and it's felt yeah. by the heart. Yeah. Yeah. First one is personal sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, um, the, one of my years, I, I've been in business since 2009. One of the years, I think I took about five Sundays off mm -hmm. the whole year. And this was before I had my daughter, of course. Mm -hmm. But but it was no question. Mm -hmm. If I was working until 3 a.m., going mm -hmm. to sleep for a few hours, waking up at 5 and at the office and going mm -hmm. right back to work, it, was, it wasn't even, a, it, not that it wasn't a concern, it was just in my head is I have to do it. Right. Personal sacrifice. I'm, right. Uh, I'm not doing those hours anymore. Yeah, uh, the, that's the, great. the biggest change was because I ha we have Taylor, our daughter. She, yes. She's almost two now. Yeah. And I, I want to be in her life, not yes. mm -hmm. the other way around, not, right. not married to the laboratory. Right. But um, another sacrifice is, uh, is uh, just helping people, mm -hmm. right? I, I've, I've, had, I've been lucky to be surrounded by other technicians helping me. Mm -hmm. So there are local laboratories here who, who have technology or who need help. And mm -hmm. some people, they, they ask me, why do you help them? They're your competitors. Mm -hmm. And my, I always say, well, I'm not good at this because it came natural. I'm good at it because someone taught me. Right. And if I can be a resource to my competitor here, then just have a good heart. Absolutely. Because right? what That's you right. give comes back to you too. That's yeah. exactly right. Very, yeah. very. My, uh, my, my second one would probably be oh. so personal sacrifice was the first one. Right. Second one would be clear conscience. Okay. Um, most of the decisions I make are based on me having a clear conscience. Mm -hmm. um, as a business person, it, it's easy to take advantage of, of mm -hmm. somebody. Mm -hmm. But um, a lot of those decisions are based on that. Third one to, would be to have humility. Mm -hmm. um, I see this, when I started the business, I was 25. Mm -hmm. um, You're still 25, right? <laughs> <laughs> 24 now. Oh, all right, all right. I don't know how that works. <laughs> <laughs> I am 33, though, I, I will oh, say. So. TMI, come on, guys. <laughs> but um, um, having humility. Yeah. Um, I was doing cold calls going to dental offices. Mm -hmm. Right now, now, in their eyes, here's this kid yeah. saying, hey, I can do this for you, I can do that. Yeah. Um, now, I had to learn to accept criticism mm -hmm. because I was learning so much. Mm -hmm. And I see it a lot with younger generations. I mean, yeah. millennials, yeah. right? Um, I, I'm right on that edge of millennial or generation X, uh -huh. uh, okay. right? So I, I can be a millennial mm -hmm. um, before I would be offended by that. Right. Now I'm trying to own up to it, right? right? So oh, good, because we did have that conversation, we have conversation. if you recall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, great. <laughs> but um, I, I'd find the younger generation, you know, they, they always feel 
their feelings are hurt or mm. they feel underappreciated. Mm -hmm. But really, it's you, you got to be able to take constructive criticism. Yes. And for me, that's humility. Yes. Mm -hmm. And being being able to accept that is one of the things that, in my head as a business owner, is like I'm always learning. Mm -hmm. Like that's always in my head. Someone always has something to teach me. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that that's important to being successful is being able to listen. Mm -hmm. And you've got to be willing to accept. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's the key. Yes. And also understand that individuals who are a lot more mature than you, who have had their businesses a lot longer than you and so forth, they've been through what you've been through, they've been through, you know, oh, yeah. and they continue to grow. And so it's, it's really important to listen to more seasoned individuals who have businesses for many, many years because they have so much to offer. Now, you still do your own thing, but, you yeah. know, their experience really helps um, to, to guide you sometimes with decisions that you have to make. Honestly, yeah. I'll, I'll have this mindset for the next yeah. 50 years. Yeah. And that's the only yeah. mindset to have. That's right. Yeah. That's one of the things we teach in our, in our classes. Yeah. Learn to listen. Yeah. You, you'll be surprised what you hear. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. So true. Okay, Adrian. Okay. So what, what, what is um, the best advice you can give our viewers and listeners regarding keys to success? This uh, I thought about this one hard also, and um, there's, all, there's always a, my grandmother, before I lived with my aunt and uncle through mm -hmm. high school, um, I was mainly raised by my grandma, mm -hmm. and um, she, you know, she, she raised me and my, my sisters by herself, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, she would always say, just live within your means. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well so stated. It, Great. Now, advice. does that does that apply that apply to personal? Yeah. But when I think about it more, that applies to business also. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Is can my today can my can my business operate successfully with what I have? Mm -hmm. And it can. Of course, we always want more. Right. But just operating and living within our means yes. is something that I always I always find myself saying silently to right. myself. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, Adrian. <laughs> Um, well, we're out of time. We'll have to wrap it up. Adrian's words of wisdom with regards to keys to success can be found on Newman Consulting Services webpage, which is newmanconsultingservices.com and landing page denilia.org. Thank you to you, our viewers and listeners, for tuning in. Thanks to broadcast our broadcast engineer, Zuri Bender, our floor manager, Nick Sexton, and to Jay Fidel, our executive producer, who puts it all together. Thank you so much, Adrian, for Thank joining you. us today and sharing your uh, insights to success. Think Tech, Think Tech, Keys to Success, will be back next Thursday at 11 a.m. We ask that you tune in again and ask your friends and family to do so as well. I'm, I'm Danelia, D-A-N-E-L-I-A. -E and I'm the other half of the duo, John Newman. And leaving you today, we would like to leave you with a, a quote from Zig Ziglar. And it says, you can have everything you want in life if you'll help enough other people get what they want. Thank you all. Aloha. Aloha.